What is up guys? Welcome back to another video here on Muddy Beards 4x4. Today I'm going to show you how to install this Barnes four-wheel drive truss onto your Ford 9-inch. So stick around. Now, if you guys are not a subscriber to our channel, make sure you take the time, hit the subscribe button. It really helps us out. Uh, we got a website, muddybeards4x4.com. You can buy some merchandise, have an Amazon shop and page, do your Amazon shopping on there, click the link on our website. We really appreciate it. You can see right here, this is already finished, totally completed. But let's go back to when I first started working on this project. So there's a lot of things to think about when you're gonna be setting up and trussing and doing an axle bill like I'm doing right now. Obviously, I went with Barnes Four Wheel Drive, their um, axle truss, because that's what I'm using to build all of my suspension. So it makes sense for me to use this one. This particular truss from Barnes Four Wheel Drive is like $99. It also comes with two side pieces that go down here and here. That's going to spread that load out and give it a little bit more rigidity across the axle tubes. But for right now, we gotta throw this thing under the Jeep and start measuring some angles. With the rear axle up under the Jeep, I am just setting up my pinion angle uh, so I know where to weld in my truss on the top here. So right now, I'm starting out, we're at about 10 degrees on the pinion yoke right now. And what we wanna do is we wanna have it basically straight at our transfer case. So this is my old drive shaft. Uh, it still has not been extended or the yoke changed out to the 1315, to the 1310, the old one. And fully extended, you can already see, this is as far out, oh, there it is, as far out as it can go, and I'm still pretty far off. The way it is set up right now, you know, just, it would be about like right here. And that's at ride height. So my down travel on this would be that much from here to here. And that is not acceptable. Need it so that it's straight with this. So we are pretty far off. And the suspension is gonna be fully adjustable. So you can, you know, rotate it up and down and move it back and forward within reason. Uh, so you wanna get this set up correctly, right where you want it to begin with, so that way you can fine tune it after you got it all together. So right now we're like about 10. So let's go up to a little bit more here. All right, so this is 20 degrees and I'm thinking we're pretty good. Uh, it seems pretty extreme, but unfortunately with the super short drive shaft, obviously it's gonna be a lot longer here once I get it rebuilt, but that will help out the pinion angles. Uh, but this looks pretty sweet right here. I don't want to go up anymore. Uh, so I will probably set this thing probably 18, 20 degrees. Now with this thing back up on the bench, um, we can start mocking it all up, doing some measuring, figuring out how exactly I'm going to make this thing fit on here the way I want it. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be dropping this truss down because I want to be able to weld this thing to the top of the housing. So this uh, lip down here on this back side of the housing, I want to weld it to the back of the housing. So I'll get, you know, two or three inches of bead on the back for strength. It's going to bring everything down nice and low, give me a lot more clearance on my up travel on the underside of my Jeep. So just cut out a template of what I need to cut out here. And uh, we'll just do some measuring and do some cutting and should drop it down and then address any other issues that we have.
Now there's a couple things I need to address on this housing before I start welding this, uh, this truss on and start building up around that. There's a few areas that I need to weld before I get started on this. So there's a spot here on the top, looks like there's an impact. I don't know what happened, you know, but there is a notch right here that I'm gonna need to fill it up uh, with the welder and grind it down, make myself feel better. There's a couple spots on the tube where I cut a little bit too deep when I was taking off the brackets. So I'll fill those holes in, grind it down flat. Uh, also on the back here, that looks like there is a crack and somebody had welded on this spot. So I'm going to address all of these little issues with the welder before I start working on the truss. Figured I'd just do it all at one time. I was just gonna do this top, just the spots that I'm not gonna be able to get to, but since I have it out right here, I might as well just fire up the welder and just do it all at one time. Also, I'm gonna fill up this uh, vent tube hole because with clocking the axle back, the 15 degrees or 20 degrees, uh, the vent hole is now basically straight backwards. So I'm gonna have to drill it a new one up here on the top. Not I can once I get the truss on, get everything on, I can figure out where I want my actual uh, vent to be because I can move it around once I fill this hole, drill it, tap it, and put it back together. So let's fire up the welder and fill some of these holes. Now before you get carried away and tack your truss on uh, to test fit it, make sure you hit the top of the axle and the underside of the truss with some paint. Now that I have everything cleaned up where I'm going to be welding, I will tack it into place, triple check everything, and then start welding all together. So the whole thing fully welded in now, uh, checked all my numbers, everything is still good. It's my first time really welding a lot with this welder. So I'm really happy with the way the welds turned out. Not super consistent, uh, mostly because of me and my inexperience, but I'm still learning and I am really confident that this is not going anywhere. There's no way this thing is gonna come apart. Okay, before I continue on anymore, I have the sides and the top welded in. Saw that I kind of manipulated, massaged the top here to fill that gap so it was nice and easy to fill. I want to fully weld on the bottom here, all the way across, and all the way around here, same on the other side. But I can fill this gap right here easily. I could fill this not as easily because I don't have the experience and uh, so what I did is I kind of notched this out a little bit, cut a little bit off of the edge, and I pounded it in with a hammer. So now there's a much smaller gap here on the bottom, so I can fill this whole gap in all the way down and around, and then I'll put, then I'll fill this in right here where I cut it and bent it. I'll fill that in as well, 
and then I'll do the same on the other side. So that way there's not a huge gap that I have to fill. Um, that's just my idea. idea. Hopefully it works out. Well, here it is guys, fully welded in, painted up, ready to start the next step of setting up the suspension. I ended up at about 16 degrees of pinion angle with zero degrees at the top of the truss. There was some compromise because of the limitations of getting this pumpkin in and out of uh, the housing. So I had to compromise a little bit, but it's gonna be totally fine and it's gonna fit perfect. If you learn anything from our videos here on Muddy Beards 4x4, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up and some comments. Uh, the next video should be me putting it under the Jeep, cutting off all my old brackets, and mocking up my new suspension. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching our videos, guys, and we'll see you on the trail. This video is brought to you in part by Harbor Freight Tools, Barnes 4-Wheel Drive, Motivex Tools, and Yankum Ropes. Check out the link in the description to learn more.